Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go, racing boy. My name's Eric Pate. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Racing with Eric Pate. Where there's quite a few things that we're going to discuss regarding um, this last race, um, the All Star Race at North Wilkesboro. Um, we also have a special event in the Xfinity series coming up. And we're going to talk about that lineup. Um, and yeah, so as you can see, the topics of discussion today. Um, this is I'm gonna do it this way this week due to the fact that I'm just so late and I'm not gonna spend. If I can just do OBS and hit screen record, that takes me 10 seconds versus two or three minutes to unplug my monitor, plug the cord, plug my HDMI cord from my computer to my projector, and then get the projector on and everything, get everything in position, and then. Yeah, OBS could only take me 10 seconds to hit record, so, and just because I'm all I'm already 20 hours late at recording this episode, anyway, I was meant to record it yesterday, but I was basically laying at work, and then uh, as soon as I got home, I fell asleep, and yeah. Um, as you can see, the topics of the discussion are Stenhouses versus Bush. The penalties regard coming out of the Stenhouse versus Bush incident, the race results from the All Star race and the truck race, the top ten in points as usual. Uh, next week, we won't just have the top ten in points. We we'll also have our reminding of the winners, which I need to go ahead and put Corey I'm on for North Wilkesboro, and I would put Lega our um, Joby Lagano on. Our topic of discussion. I chose to purposely wait for this week because we have four stages this week in the Coca Cola 600. All driver broadcast lineup and picks for the Coast 600. This is a special event I am discussing about the Xfinity series is the all driver broadcast. Um, I will get into detail. We will be talking about that in probably about 10 minutes, if not less. So what exactly happened between Kyle Busch and Ricky Stenhouse? Well, when the race started, Bush was being aggressive early. Um, he got squeezed by Stenhouse in turn two. No, um, going into turns three and four. That's what it kind of looked like to me. And but I, what Bush did was a little too far. In turn two on the second lap, he spun Ricky Stenhouse, and it was enough to cause Stenhouse to park his car for the rest of the race. What I mean by like he wrecked out of the race is what I'm saying. Um, when he went to the garage, he stopped in Kyle Busch's pit stall, said that he will be waiting for Kyle after the race. Um, there was a little bit of conversation between Ricky Stenhouse and Kyle Busch at Kyle Busch's hauler. Stenhouse was waiting for him at his hauler. Um, punches starting to fly and some crews and I think the 8 crew. And I know for a fact a couple guys from the 47 crew were involved and a few guys from the 8 crew were involved. Um, we're actually going to take a look at both the incident that caused Stenhouse to wreck out of the race and the incident after the race. Um, I know last week when we were looking at the Chris Buescher and Tyler Reddick incident, I chose not to include the post-race conversation. I did say, though, that if it was, if it turned physical, I would have included it. This one did have a post-race conversation, and this one did turn physical, so we will take a look at that one. So let's take a look about what exactly happened with the 47 and 8. So this is at the beginning of the race. Lugano on the inside, Klauski on the outside, green on row one, green flag, waves. Lugano goes off turn one and clears the 99 in the six. And it did look like he got squeezed up a little bit by Ricky Stenhouse. A little contact there. It's short track racing, so I kind of understand some frustration early. But it's also the all-star race, so you have to also try to be aggressive early. And this is where Kyle messed up. He turned Ricky Stenhouse right into the wall. As me being a fan of Rowdy, as me being a part of what is called Rowdy Nation, I I have to say this was very unacceptable on Kyle Bush. He should not have done that. It's the All Star Race. You have to start getting aggressive early. I understand that he got squeezed up the racetrack. But, dude, it's the all-star race. You have to start being aggressive early. 
because there's just a hundred dollar paycheck on the line. There's no stages. This is one 200 lap stage. Yes, there are competition cautions on lap 150 in 150, but you do have to start being aggressive early. But I think Kyle was a little too aggressive. Now let's take a let's take a look about what happened post race. As you can probably tell by the thumbnail. And it's going to get physical, but I did say. So, they're just talking. They're trying to talk. I decided not to include the audio so I don't get copyrighted. Um, shout out to both on um, the NASCAR YouTube channel. Hopefully, they don't mind with me using this. See, see, it's just a conversation. And Kyle's like, you're being a little dramatic. And he's like, oh. And then Zenhouse threw a punch. And, and this fight lasted, like, I think not very long. Yes, if a couple of the eight guys were like tackled Stenhouse and whatnot, it looked like. But the eight guys really were just trying. What they were really trying to do was they were just trying to break the fight up. Like, I guess we just saw there, they were just trying to get the fight broken up. That's all they were doing. That's all they were doing, and that's why everyone's like, why didn't none of the eight guys get in trouble? It was because they were really there just to try to break it up. So, the penalties. I meant to do it one by one, but this works too. Ricky Stenhouse was fined. Ricky Stenhouse himself was fined. Junior was fined $75,000. Ricky Stenhouse Sr. is not allowed to, is indefinitely suspended. Um... He is not allowed to go to any races for the time being. Zen House mechanic Clint Myrek was suspended. Zen, um, and I think he's suspended for eight races. Zen House engine, I did not put that on here. I, I should have. Zen House engine tuner Keith Matthews suspended four races. And of course, no suspensions on Kyle Bush's. Let's take a look again at the penalties. Oh, by the way, for the for the uh, All Star race, we're just gonna go through the results of the Open. Um, I went ahead and searched it up on Google. Okay, so I was right. The mechanic suspended eight races, and Matthew and the tuner suspended for four, for four. Uh, All-Star results are in bold with the exception of Logano because I did say that if uh, all poll winners are bolded in my series, so since Joe Logano got the poll, he will be bolded. So that's why I said bold with the exception of Logano. We're going to talk about Logano after we get through the race results. Joey Logano led 199 of 200 laps to win the All-Star race. I was pretty impressed with that. Danny Hamlin came home second. Came home, coming home third was Chris Buescher. Coming home fourth is Kyle Larson. Coming home fifth is Ryan Blaney. Coming home sixth was Bubba Wallace. He was second in the open. Yes, I live really close to railroad crossing. I live like really close to some roller tracks. So if you hear a train in the background, that is why. Sounds like the train's busy today. Ross Chastain seventh. Eighth was Chase Elliott. Ninth was Michael McDowell. Tenth was Kyle Busch. Noah Gregson got into the All-Star race with a fan vote. Uh, I did not spell vote right. Anyway, um, Run Truex was 12th. 13th was Ty Gibbs. He won the Open. 14th was Tyler Reddick. 15th was Daniel Suarez. Brad Kozowski led the only lap that was not led by Logano, which was lap 104. Christopher Bell was 17th. 18th was A.J. Ambeninger. 19th was William Byron. 20th, and of course, dead last was Ricky Stenhouse. The Stage 1, Stage 2 results from the truck race are as goes. Uh, meant to be one by one, but this works too. 
Time at Jeski, one stage one. Ben Rhodes, one stage two. Was second, stage one. Rajal Karouf was third in stage three. Fourth was Taylor Gray in stage one. Fifth was Corey Heim. Sixth was Ty Dillon. Seventh was Christian Eckes. Kenneth Gray, eighth. Jack Wood, ninth. Tyler Ingram, tenth. Ah, wait a minute. There we go. Tyler Ankrum won Sage 2, Jack Garcia was 2nd in Sage 2, Stuart Friesen 3rd, Jack Wood 4th, Lane Riggs 5th, 6th was Ben Rhodes, 7th was Christian Nackis again. I did say that if a driver was to finish in the same position in both stages, regardless what number it is, what position it was, I'm just going to write them once. Um, Corey Heim 8th, 9th Jack Wood, Granny Finger 10th. And our race results from the truck race are as follows. Corey Heim won the race. Grand Am Finger second. Third was Lane Riggs. Fourth was Brandon Queen who made his truck debut. Fifth was Sammy Smith. Sixth, Christian Eckes. Seventh, Nick Sanchez. Eighth, Tyler Ingram. Ninth, Daniel Dye. Tenth, to Friesen. 11th time in Jeski, 12th Jack Wood. 13th was Taylor Gray. 14th was Vaja. 15th was Ross Chastain. 16th, Tanner Gray. 17th, Stephen Parsons. 18th, Matt Mills. Bailey Curry, 19th. Matt Crafton, 20th. 21st, Jake Garcia. 22nd, Ben Rhodes. 23rd, Mason Massey. 24th was Chase Purdy. Ty Dillon, 25th. 26th was Timmy Hill. Dean Thompson was 27th. 28th was Dawson Sutton. 29th, Brett Holmes. 30th, Lawless Island. Thad Moth at 30th, Burt. 31st, 32nd, Spencer Boyd. 33rd, Josh Rayu. Clayton Green, 34th, 35th was Connor Jones, 36th was Trey Hutchins. Now, the only reason I'm doing the truck points is because the Cup Series point did not change due to the fact that uh, we had a non-points paying race in the Cup race this week. Also, this week, we have our Triple Truck Challenge. is the first race of the tri Triple Truck Challenge, which I should have also included that in there. It is like the Truck Series All-Star. Um, the winner of each of the next three races in the truck race gets $150,000. Um, if a truck driver wins two in a row, two in a row um, I think it's $350,000, $250,000. And if they win all three, it is $500,000. But if they just win one, it's one hundred and fifty. dollars Christian Eckes is four, has 426 points, is our points leader. Second is Corey Heim for 122 points. Third is Ty Majeski, 362 points. Voted on the points again run down. It means they also have won races this year. Nick Sanchez, 360 points. Tyler Gray, 328 points. Tyler Ingram, 315. Rajah Karouf, 307. Grant Ampinger, 256. Ben Rhodes, 254. Tanner Gray, 252. Now let's get into our education portion of the show. I was also going to talk about um, Kyle Larson. Uh, Kyle Larson uh, attempting a, a feat that I think is pretty amazing. But that that's just going to be a whole 10 minute video by itself so expect a video another video to come out either today or tomorrow of me just talking the praising the shit about what Kyle Larson is kind of attempt to do this weekend anyway in every race exhibit races excluded that means like the clash and the all-star race and whatnot at a lap number at least two times a green and white checkered flag comes out he's ended the stages the top 10 get points if they are racing for points, aka full time. As soon as the top 10 have crossed the line, the caution flies. Now, with exception though, 
Now, if Kashi comes out, now, unlike at the end of the race, if Kashi comes out with two laps to go, for example, in the stage, they end the stage under yellow. Um, so, and it's the same, but like, if it's determined that we're not going to get started before for the end of the stage, they would just extend the caution and whatnot. Um, I'm going to add one thing that I did not put in here is that pit row closes with two laps to go in each stage. I assume, uh, if a part-time is racing, they get no points because they're not racing for points. Championship drivers in the final four do not get any stage points. Runner of the stage will also gets playoff point. We will take a look at a random example I came up with. Now, this is just an example I came up with. So, don't, don't get too butt hurt because this is just a random example I thought of. I'm just pretending like this is the... End of the first stage of the Coke 600. That's why the Coke 600 logo is here. So I'm just going to pretend it's the end of the first stage of the Coke 600. Okay? Let's just pretend this is the end of stage one of the Coke 600. So Ty Gibbs, Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott. So Ty Gibbs on stage, Ryan Blaney finishes second, Chase Elliott is third. Fourth is Kyle Busch. Fifth is Joey Logano. Sixth is Denny Hamlin. Seventh is Bubba Wallace. Eighth is Alex Bowman. Ninth is Kyle Larson. And tenth is Noah Gregson. Like, this is just a random example here. Um, yeah. Kyle Larson is attempting the Coke to Coca Cola 600 in the Indianapolis 500. I just want to make a whole video just talking about how good of a race car Kyle Larson is and he just proved it last Sunday in Indianapolis of going to the fast six for the 500. Now I mentioned earlier that this weekend we have an all driver broadcast so what is that? So real quick I should have made a separate slide explaining what it is. So usually for the Xfinity race on the Charlotte Oval keywords Charlotte Oval. Now I don't know if, there, if this is going to be the last year of them doing it or if Amazon Prime is kind of let them do it. No, uh, the CW is kind of let them do it. But the all driver broadcast is this. Is so on Fox usually they let two of the drivers, Cup Series drivers, come up to the booth for the race, like help them call the race. This year it's been Joey Logano and one other. And yes, Joey Logano is going to be a part of this, actually. And I think it's pretty amazing that Logano got got the the spot he's getting because he's in the last couple of years he has called a number of Xfinity, he has called like maybe a good half of the Xfinity races on Fox, if not seventy five percent of them. And since Kevin Kevin Harvick had his spot, the spot that Logano's getting this year. And all the others, Kevin Harvick had his spot. Now, when Kevin Harvick retired at the end of last season, they were trying to find a new play-by-play. -play. And the guy they selected, I feel like, is the most appropriate guy. Because, like I said, he has either called half or more than half of the Xfinity races on Fox in like the last couple of years. So, let's go ahead and talk about who is our lineup. What's our lineup? Dang it, I meant to do one row by one, but this works too. So our play-by-play -play is Joey Logano, and he's the driver of the 22. Our booth analyst, number one, is Ryan Blaney, driver of the 12. So so the two, the last two Cup Series champions are in the booth. Um, our, our third booth analysis. Now, I think this, is, this was weird, picking him. I feel like Daniel Suarez is more appropriate for for the second booth in, booth in the list spot. So, but I also like Eric Jones. But Suarez has also called a fair share of Xfinity races on Fox within the last couple of years. So, I I feel like it should have been him over Eric Jones. Carson Hosevar, who jokingly did some pit report. Just, just as like during a rain delay a couple years ago, Carson Hosevar 
did some pit reporting. So I think it's appropriate he got he got it and he's the driver in the seventy seven. And the other guy he's battling with for rookie of the year is Josh Berry, driver of the four car, which is Kevin Harvick's own number. Over in the Charlotte studio we have Brad Kozowski, driver of the six. And Austin Sinjic, driver of the two. I think this is a little bit of a light lineup. I think we need a third pit reporter and a third person in the Charlotte studio. Here's here's the two people I think we should add. Okay. I will take move Eric Jones to the third pit reporter. I still think we need a third pit reporter. So move Eric Jones to pit reporter number three. And put Ricky Stenhouse in the Charlotte studio. And then put Daniel Suarez as the other booth analyst. So, actually, give me once. So, yeah. Give me one second. I'm going to edit the slide to, to show you what I think it should be. All right, just give me one second here so I can go through this. So again, I I see you saw I added the lineup. So let's take a look at the lineup, what I think the lineup should look like. Now, honestly, I think all races should have three pit reporters. I don't know about two races like in, in a Charlotte studio or something. But anyway, or the or what they call the Steve Burns studio. Anyway, let's take a look about what what the all driver broadcast lineup should be. So of course, I still think Logano should be in the booth. Same thing with Planey, the two the last two champions of the NASCAR Cup series. Um, I really think Daniel Suarez should be in the booth this for the for this all driver broadcast. I mean, I don't have anything against Eric Jones, don't get me wrong. I don't have anything against Jones. Uh, and I meant to say two, I accidentally put three, but I'll edit it. Pit reporter was Carson Hosevar. I still think Carson Hosevar should be a pit reporter. Again, he's driver of the 77. Josh Berry. So be a pit reporter, driver of the 4. Move Eric Jones, pit reporter, driver of the 43. Brad Kozowski, driver of the 6. Austin Sendrick, driver of the 2. I still think keep, keep those two as in the Steve Burns studio. And then put Ricky Stenhouse, driver of the 47, in there as well. Um, honestly, this should have been on the previous slide. I have, I, I have, um, I did not, do, I was not thinking through when I was making this PowerPoint. Good thing I'm deleting it, like, as soon as I'm done with this video. That's what I do with these PowerPoints is, since I'm not presenting them again, I delete them. So, I don't know, I don't, I don't think it matters that I had these backwards, but, anyway... So my number one pit, okay, so I'm doing it in order for most to least amount of times that has happened. Um, if it is voted, they went on to be the champion in that same season. If it's in all caps, they did it from the poll. So Martin Truex. And I did it twice in 2017, and it ended up being the 2017 champion in the Pennzoil 400 and the Quaker State 400 at Kentucky. From the poll, he did it at the 2018 Auto Club 400 and 2018 Quaker State 400, both from the poll. 2021 was the next time. It was, I was, oh, oh man, I forgot one. Um, 2018, um, I think it was called the First Data 500. So I, I forgot one, sorry. Um, he did it in the 2021 Goodyear 400 in the 2023 Crayon 301. Um, yes. Yes, he did. I totally forgot to put that on there. Again, like I said, I'm going to delete this PowerPoint I'm seeing it's done, so it doesn't really matter that. I'm not going to go back and edit. Kevin Harvick. Um... 2018 Pins Oil 400. I'm um, Drive for Autism 400 in 2018. Now, even though he didn't do it, for, even though he did not get the pole for this race, he still started the race first because the pole winner had a drop to the back before the race due to phone pre race inspection. So he still technically led the field to green, so that's why I went ahead and all caps that. 
2018 Pure Michigan 400, 2018 AA Texas 500. He almost did it on back to Kevin Harvick almost did it on back to back days in 2020 at the Michigan race in the 2020 Price Keepers 312. And then if he did it again, um, now it was it was called the Fire Keepers 400 was the official race name. But I said 312, reason being is we only ran th uh, 312 miles because we had to come back the next day and do it again. And we had two, t two 2020 drivings, 312. One was on Saturday, which all which another driver on this list took all three stages in that one. And then Harvick did it in the Sunday edition. Harvick is so far the only driver who did not qualify in the top five to sweep all three stages. Kyle Larson took all four stages in the 2021 Coke 600, 2021 Toyota Safe Mart uh, 350. That meant say three, not two. Um, he did both of those from the pole, and he was also the champion in 2021. I he did this as a I will say a revenge race for for what happened a week before with him, Bubba Wallace, the 2022 Dixie Vodka 400. Uh, 2023 South Point 400, which put him into Phoenix, and the 2024 Pennzoil 400. And again, I am I'm gonna make a whole video, a minute video talking about the type of racer Kyle Larson is. So like this guy, oh my God, that's just gonna be a 20 minute video on its own. Kyle Busch only did it twice in the 2018 Coke 600 and the 2019 All Club 400. Chase Elliott did it twice, and both of his were from the pole. 2019 Gold Bowling at the Glen, and the 2022 Quick State 400. Brad Kozowski did it in the 2019 SCP 500. And William Bryan did it in the 2023 Pennzoil 400. Okay, I forgot to put one on here, and I, it was um, Denny Hamlin. He did it too. Um... I should have put him on here. I was not thinking. He did it both in 2020. He did the 2020 Dixie Vodka 400 from the pole. He took all three stages. Now, even though, even though, like, it was by a random draw, it was still from the pole. And then, um, he did it again. In the Saturday edition of the 2020 Trident 312. Um, I'm going to add one thing though. Uh, he actually got on to after the uh, Trident 312 on the Saturday edition. Because he tried to do a burnout. Like he started doing a burnout. And they're like. Um, you have to race that car again tomorrow. And that, so they basically told him. Yeah you need to stop. And he goes why? I'm like um. And they go, uh, you're racing that car again tomorrow. He goes, oh, crap. I totally forgot about that. And when they were talking to him in victory lane on, on that, it's like, so why did you start doing brain? I was like, oh, I was just too excited. And, it, and I totally forgot to race this car again tomorrow. So what are my picks for the Coke 600? Now, I don't know how I did this. I got a red border here, but that's awesome. So I'm going to pick Joey Logano. I feel like Joey Logano. I've been close a number of times. Now, I am kind of put, as you can see, though, I put a race from, that he won at Texas and a race that he's won at Atlanta on here as well. Because since we only do the one race a year on the Charlotte Oval now, ever since 2018, the two tracks closest to Charlotte, that look that like races the closest to Charlotte, are Texas and Atlanta. Because they shaped, uh, they, they're shaped exactly the same and have the exact length. Except for, Atlanta's like 400th of a mile longer but it's still pretty close and I think if you can win a race at Atlanta you should be able to win a race at Texas or Charlotte my second pick is give me Denny Hamlin he's a three-time Texas winner and I don't think he has ever won at Atlanta and he's the 2022 600 winner he did that one from the pole but he was not the dominant car of the day my dark horse pick is actually kind of be the one who I chose to win the 600. Carl Larson, um, he was the 2021 Coke 600 winner and the Old Wiley Auto Park 500 winner. I accidentally put 
five hundred twice. That's my m mistake. Number four is Chase Elliott. He was the 2020, 2020 runner up in the 600 and won the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400 earlier this year. William Byron won the 2023 Auto Trader Automotive 400. He also won the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500. Um, ah, a couple years ago, Atlanta. And then, uh, he, I think he was the runner up in last year's. I'm double checking. Yes. And my last pick is give me last year's winner of the Coco 600. Now, you can say the any race from Atlanta from 2022 on. That these people have won. You can argue that it was on an um, on a drafting track, but they but back in the day, back before 2021, in 2021, the track was uh, a lot like uh, was not drafting. It was just like normal Texas or normal Charlotte. So so yeah, I did put wins on. Acts a lot like. And then my dark horse is Ross Chastain and Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs keeps making the case for himself for winning. So that's why I keep putting him on dark horse. Cause, or in my picks. Because this guy's going to win. Ty Gibbs is going to win sooner or later. And then Ross Chastain was actually the car to beat a couple years ago. And then some late cautions came out. And some pit strategies did not really work out for Chastain. So... Yeah. All right. So that's all we got for Let's Talk Racing for Eric Pay, um, post all star to and pre Coca Cola 600. I expect another video either coming from me today or tomorrow talking about the racing career of Kyle Larson. Like, subscribe, comment, favorite. Be nice, go be awesome. Eric Pay, no hate. See you later.